Hello everybody. Um, today we are going to be replacing the bearings on an early 90s, 91 or 92 to be exact, Gary Fisher Huku Iku. Um, so for you that don't know, the early Gary Fishers and Kleins used um, press fit bearings. And they're, this model, are held in by a circlip and as you can hear, these are nice and toast. So we have new bearings from SRP that we're gonna pop in and uh, get this thing all ready to go. So first thing you're gonna need when we do this is your circlip pliers. And obviously it's pretty dirty in here, so we're gonna get a pick to clean that out. Just gonna help make the, the clips come out easier. And then once the clips are out, we will proceed to remove the, uh, the bearings and then clean up the surface to get ready to install the new ones. Okay, so first things first, I'm just gonna clean the dirt out of here a little bit. We can better access the clip. So these are circlip pliers. These are where we're gonna to need to remove this clip. Slot it in. So you see the clip has two little holes. Each prong of the pliers goes in one hole and then when we squeeze it, the clip's gonna get smaller and it's gonna come out. There we go. So you gotta give it a really good squeeze to get it out. So now we have one side out. And then we're gonna do the same to the other side. So now that we have the circlips out, we are going to tap on the spindle to knock one side of the bearings out. And then we'll do the same thing to knock the other side out. Um, these probably have not been removed in years, so they may come out a little difficult. So then that ha those taps turn into to wax and uh, with a bigger hammer. But we'll start with a medium sized hammer and see where we go. Gonna need a bigger hammer. Gonna need a bigger hammer. So one thing when we're trying to hammer on a bottom bracket or any part of a bike, we wanna to try to clamp as close to it as possible. So I'm gonna move it in the stand and make it easier for us to hammer on. Okay. We're gonna clamp it way up here so we can really give it some sweat, give it some hits. Okay, so now we have it clamped like so on the stand and we're just going to hit right there and see what happens. We got it. Um, we got it out. Looks a little rough for wear. It's for sure had some moisture in there. Um, bearing's still attached, but what we can do is we'll put this in the vise like this and we'll knock out the bearing. And then we can use the spindle to knock out the other side bearing. So let's go back to the vise. Use the vise to knock off the bearing off the spindle. So I'm just gonna set it, I and mean, you know, we don't care about this bearing, but I'm just gonna set it in my vise like so. And we're just gonna repeat the steps we did before. And now we got the spindle free. And we got our old crusty bearing. Now that we have the old crusty bearing off the spindle, we're gonna use the spindle to knock the other bearing out. Um, and then we are going to 
uh, clean up the spindle and the bottom bracket shell to get ready to replace the new bearings in. So we're just gonna feed this in from this side. Poke it out like so. And then we're just gonna tap, tap, tap until this bearing comes up. And here we go. We got it out. Now we're gonna have to go do the same thing to get it back off of the spindle. So we're just gonna work on cleaning this up a little bit. Okay, after some more sanding, we've gotten the spindle to be pretty clean. It did get pitted, but the bearings ride here, so it's okay that we're pitted in the middle and pitted here. There's no, the bearings obviously protected there from being pitting here, so that's good. Okay, so there's two other things we're also going to need um, for this project other than the new bearings. Um, one of those is we're going to need Loctite 620. So this is bearing retaining compound. This is the high temperature stuff. There is another version that's not high temp, but um, either of, I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but either of the bearing retaining compounds will work. They are different than thread lockers, different compounds. So you want to make sure that you get actual um, bearing mount um, compound. And then you'll need some sort of bearing press. I just have my wheels manufacturing press. Really all you need is a threaded rod and some nuts and washers. Um, this kit was on sale and these adapters are nice for pressing bearings. So we'll be using this, the new bearings and the Loctite. Before we do that though, we did, as you saw, I cleaned this up, so this is ready to go. But now we do need to clean in here. You see it is a little dirty where the bearing's gonna go. So we're just gonna clean that up with some Scotch-Brite and um, looks like some water sat in the bottom of this bottom bracket for a while, but we're going to get that all cleaned up and we'll get this, uh, you want to make sure the groove is cleaned up so that the lock ring will fit in good. So we'll clean that out with a pick. And then... So we're just going to start by making sure both grooves are nice and cleaned out so that the retaining rings fit. So in here where there's rust, doesn't matter per se. We're gonna scrub it out, but um, it's not the end of the world because the bearings just go on this, this surface right here. So there's a little bit of kind of build up right here. Just gonna take some sandpaper. We want it to be smooth in here so that the bearings fit in nicely. Um, and now before we uh, um, put in the retaining compound, we just wanna clean the surface of in of the shell and of the bearings with rubbing alcohol. And then we'll just let that dry. Okay. So now the frame is prepped. Okay, so you'll notice that this spindle is not the same on both sides. There's more spindle past the ridge that the bearing butts up to 
on this side. We're going to call that, that is the drive side. Um, and then there's a larger shoulder here, so there's less spindle that sticks out past the bearing on the non-drive side. And if you look, there's more bottom bracket shell on this frame sticking out past the right AK drive side than there's on the left. And we also need clearance for the chain rings on the drive side, which is why this is longer on the drive side. So we're going to prep the bearings and we're going to get putting this in. Okay, so we have to get our Loctite. We want to shake this up. And then we're going to clean the surface, which we already did with rubbing alcohol. And now we're going to put some of this into the bearing surface. So when you open up the bottle, it will be sealed. So you're going to want to cut that. And then we're going to apply a little bit. All the way around. It's pretty viscous, so it does stay on the top. And then we're going to do the same to the bearing. It's not that bearing. It's just going to get pressed in. This stuff does have a 24 hour cure time, so after pressing these bearings, you're not going to want to um, obviously use the about the bike for an hour, for 24 hours. So I'm just using the old bearing to help seat the new bearing. So you'll see that bearing. Sliding in nicely for us. So we need it to be a little bit in further. Uh, more than that, because we need to have room to get the, uh, the, the lock ring in. We'll just do it nice and slow. Still not all the way there yet. With that on, I won't have to thread the rod in so far. So will just make everything a little bit nicer. How long did that feel like it hit a stop? Yeah, so there is a stop. I can feel it. So you will have a ridge that the bearing can't go over so you can just press and sorry you can just press until you so there is a ridge in there so you can press until the bearing stops uh, moving we're going to take our pin spanners and our lock ring And easy as that. The lock ring is in and sealed. You can see we got the lock ring in there. So now we'll come over to this side. So now that we have the bearing pressed in on that side, we're gonna install the spindle. Um, before we install the spindle though, we're gonna put our bearing retaining compound on because it'll be easier without the spindle being in the way. So again, just a little bit all the way around. Hold that in. Like so. And now we just need to apply the bearing compound to this bearing. Again, just a little bit. It's going to do the job. And that one went in pretty easy. 
So the bearing is just going to press. The bearing just slid right in on this side. We didn't need the press, which is nice. And I'm just going to put the old bearing in so I can get the final clip. And then it's a little hard to get out. So I have these pliers. I never know what they're actually really for. Slash, I've never used them, what they're really for. But yeah, grab that. And then just want to quick check that our it's in all the way. And we're going to take a retaining clip. Oops. There we go. Now our clip is all the way in. I'll shine some more light on that so you can see. Um, we have our clip all the way in. And if we listen to it, I'll insert a clip here of what the old one sounded like. So that is new bearings. There you go. Boom. New bearings in a Gary Fisher. Okay, so that is how you press fit bearings into a Gary Fisher frame. Klein frames from this era also had press fit bearings. It may be slightly different. Um, process, but most likely it's going to be very similar uh, process as it was to this um, Gary Fisher. Um, so this is going to be early 90s Gary Fishers. This is a 91 slash 92. There is a different style of press fit bearings on Gary Fishers that don't have a lock ring. Principle is very similar. Um, you're still going to want to use, you know, the bearing retaining compound. That's going to be even more important without the lock ring. Um, and you can get bearings for both of those. Uh, they're the same bearings, so you can get those from SRP. These also work for the Kleins. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. We have tons more great content in the works. Um, the parts for the Rocky Mountain are showing up. Um, got some parts to rebuild some forks for different projects. We're going to be starting a uh, gravel bike conversion on our Raleigh Grand Mesa from 1985. That's going to be really fun. Um, if you're looking to work on your own projects, Make sure to check out our website, Grinjner Cycles, at grinjner.com. There'll be a link below. We have tons of parts for 80s and 90s mountain bikes, 70s, 80s, and 90s road bikes, um, frames, wheels, you name it. It's up there. New stuff added weekly. Make sure to check out our Instagram. We always have new cool products posted up on there. Uh, and have a great rest of your night. Bye.